The relationship between China and Zambia has evolved over the years. This long-standing relationship encompasses various aspects such as economy, politics, infrastructure development, and social ties. Zambia and the People's Republic of China established diplomatic ties in 1964, shortly after Zambia gained independence from British colonial rule. The Chinese government has played a crucial role in Zambia's attainment of comprehensive debt treatment with its official creditors under the G20 Common Framework on the 22nd of June 2023. This is a significant step towards restoring Zambia's long-term debt sustainability. President Hakainde Hichilema undertook a landmark six-day official visit to China at the invitation of Chinese President Xi Jinping. President Hichilema, who was accompanied by First Lady Mutinta Hichilema, arrived in China on the 10th of September, 2023. Armed with a well-defined purpose for the visit, President Hichilema got down to work holding engagements in four Chinese provinces, namely Guangdong, Jiangxi, Fuzhou, and Beijing. His first destination was the Chinese city of Shenzhen, which is China's technological hub. On 11 September 2023, President Hakainde Hichilema began his day with a visit to Lianhuashia Park, which is the resting place of Deng Xiaoping, a Chinese politician who served as a paramount leader of the People's Republic of China from December 1978 to November 1989. Xiaoping is credited for modern civilization in China today. Here, the president laid wreaths on Deng Xiaoping's six-foot statue erected in his honor. From the Lianyuasha Park, the president proceeded to one of the world's largest single container terminals, Yanchen, in Shenzhen. Yanchen handles more than 40,000 20 foot long TEU containers a day. Explaining to President Hakainde Hitlema, the officials at the port revealed that in September last year, the container throughout exceeded 1.46 million TEUs, breaking the global monthly record for a single terminal run by one port operator. So, why we are saying that is because even though you see we have so many verbs here, however, there is no any physical barrier among all the verbs. And uh, what's more, we are under one customs supervision, which means you can allow any single box inside our terminal according to the demand of the operation, so that to streamline the whole process and improve the efficiency. The president used this visit to the port to encourage port operators to consider partnering with Zambian ports such as the Mpulungu port in northern Zambia to enhance trade. The president later visited another world's renowned electric car manufacturer, Build Your Dream BYD, which has a workforce of 700,000 employees and an additional 90,000 specialized engineers who are tasked with the responsibility of creating a new invention on a daily basis. Here, the company's founder and chief executive officer, Wang Shanfu, informed the president that his company is still looking for opportunities in countries where resources 
used in the electric car manufacturing industry can be found. There are big challenges in the country. I'm talking of fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. So if we can do the switch, mm -hmm. we are able to cut mm -hmm. one of our heavy costs mm -hmm. in, the, in the economy. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, there's a lot of need for electric vehicles and for different types of electric vehicles, and that's why we are constantly developing newer models, newer brands to suit different consumers' needs, and at the same time, of course, we need newer employees, uh, you know, more and more employees to keep that up to what be it the technology or the quality, and we need people to. President Hichilema said electric motor vehicles play a crucial role in addressing environmental, economic, and societal challenges associated with traditional gasoline and diesel vehicles. This is really a wonderful uh, technology-based business. It's very clear that they've made tra dramatic advancements uh, in the EV sector, which is, uh, you know, climate uh, change, if you like, um, appropriate, and I think this is the future of um, uh, transport industry, both at personal level as well as um, at heavy duty, uh, including um, trains. So this is, this is tremendous, this is dramatic. I think the world is going this direction, and uh, we like to work with businesses like this as a country because we have uh, the raw materials that are required, copper, cobalt. Uh, nickel, manganese, lithium, group metals, uh, and basically with their technology here, our resource envelope, the capital put together, I think we can have a win-win situation uh, to, for example, to make the batteries, electric motors in Zambia market is all over the world. Including them. I think this is really what um, enthuses somebody like ourselves. Uh, I and my team. This is great work. We work to collaborate to see how and work to find common, common interests uh, with uh, this business and that is thank you. It was a busy day for the president as he also undertook a tour of Huawei Technologies at the company's headquarters in Shenzhen. At Huawei, the president witnessed the signing of a memorandum of understanding MOU between the Zambian government and Huawei Technologies, which seeks to promote the country's digital transformation agenda. Zambia's Minister of Technology and Science, Felix Mutati, and Huawei's Vice President for Southern Africa Region, Phil Lee, signed the agreement at Huawei's headquarters in Shenzhen, China. The signed MOU is aimed at realizing a digitalized future for Zambia by improving information communication technology ICT infrastructure, promoting the adoption of renewable energy, supporting innovation, and expanding access to reliable and affordable digital services across the country. A lot we can do. I know we've done quite a bit today. But there's a lot more that we can do together. And I want to thank Huawei for the work that they've been doing in Zambia. For the years that they've been in Zambia. But also to 
congratulate Huawei for using Zambia as a base for servicing four or so countries. This is what we would like Zambia to be. To be a hub to service Zambia needs, to service the needs of countries around Zambia. Because of our excellent position, geo position that we occupy. And indeed, it means that we are not servicing just the Zambian population, but the population around us, such as commerce, Africa. So we want to encourage Huawei to continue looking at Zambia as a regional hub and to build on the things that you have already started doing in Zambia. And I was, as we were walking out of that table, I was whispering to my colleagues in cabinet that we are doing things, but we are not doing enough. We can do more, faster, because the needs are tremendous in Zambia. But the solutions are here, some of the solutions are here. All we need to do is to combine the two together, the needs one side, the solutions on the other. Huawei is uh, fully committed to contributing more to Zambia's industry digitalization and ICT infrastructure uh, development, especially in the rural areas. In this regard, alongside the Ministry of Technology and Science of uh, Zambia, we will support the promotion of the rural connectivity. Hundreds of villages across Zambia is an expected benefit from it. Huawei Technologies is keen in supplementing the plans of the Zambian government to ensure that we work towards achieving digital transformation, innovation, and technology. Mr. President, I would like to make mention that Huawei Technologies Zambia has a flagship program for training ICT youth. To quote your words, the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. In this flagship program, it is a program that is open to all youth. It does not discriminate against color, gender, or creed. Later, the president held a closed door meeting with Shenzhen Communist Party led by the city secretary, Meng Fan Li. Here, matters of mutual interest were discussed between the two parties bordering on the welfare of the people in the two countries. On 12 September 2023, President Hichilema had engagements with renowned Chinese telecommunications companies at their headquarters. The companies included Tencent, and Shongshu Telecommunications Equipment, popularly known as ZTE World Over. At ZTE, President Hichilema witnessed the signing of an MOU between the company and the Zambian government for the establishment of a phone manufacturing factory in Zambia. The MOU was signed between the Zambian government, represented by Science and Technology Minister Felix Mutati, and ZTE's Vice President of Africa Division II, Chris Ye. ZTE Chief Executive Officer Lizzie Shu disclosed that the favorable business environment in Zambia had motivated the company to consider setting up the factory. Given our discussion of setting up local smartphone factories, we're discussing with the Ministry of Technology and Science and local partners to explore the business model and possibilities of setting up a local smartphone factories to manufacture affordable smartphones in Zambia. That must be the Minister of Technology. Um, there's no reason we should be sitting on, for example, the production of smartphones. This should have happened yesterday. Yes, yesterday, yesterday. So we are behind shape. Honestly, the location of Zambia lends itself, lends itself to greater opportunities. 
centrality in neighbors plus one nine Sadi collection, commercial collection, any collection, the stability in our country. Your Excellency, we need to sell this to China. The stability of our country around fairly fragile, you know, region. Our country remains. ZTE also expressed interest to collaborate with Zambia in the installation of a disaster mobile command system which can help in times of disasters. This system is said to work even when all communication systems break down during a disaster and can also be used to determine possible disasters in real time. When everything fails in terms of networking, you need to deploy emergency, which you already have the system for, emergency rescue, and let it be fire, earthquakes, or so on, you need a high reliable connection. Right? to be able to communicate with the people on the field. So this is what gives you that, basically. You have a commander center here that is portable, and then you have 4G, it's like a base station. Basically, you have everything. At Tencent Holdings Limited, a prominent Chinese multinational conglomerate with its interest in various technology and internet-related businesses, the company had expressed interest to partner with Zambia in the area of e-commerce. E-commerce involves buying and selling of goods and services over the internet through electronic means. After a successful two days in Shenzhen, the president accompanied by the first lady Mutinta Hichilema left for Yangshi province for more engagements. From Yanshi province, the president visited Fujian district in Fuju province. In Fujian, the president visited Shashi village located along the Baima river, which has seen a remarkable transformation from a neglected village to a well-developed and shining example of rural transformation. We organized the preparation of the report on poverty alleviation, development and moderate prosperity in rural Ningde. In a report, it is said that um, in Ningde there were 12.6 thousand boat dwellers that need to be moved ashore, and uh, they cannot do it single handedly with their own efforts. So, since then, the relocation of the boat dwellers was listed as a key project for the public benefit. The provincial government has earmarked 6 million yuan as a special fund to help the boat dwellers to move ashore. Shiashi village located in the capital city of Fujian province underwent a remarkable transformation during the tenure of Chinese President Xi Jinping who served as a province governor from 1999 to 2002. Here, the people who were called the boat people or fish people wandered on the sea as they had no houses. President Xi Jinping, then Fujian governor, made two inspection visits to Xiaxi in 1999 and 2000 and instructed that the government should help the villagers relocate on the land and enable them to lead prosperous lives. Today, a once upon a time impoverished village has been transformed into a modern dwelling with villagers' income sources having expanded to sectors such as aquaculture, ocean fishing, trade services, and building. This transformation agenda has been documented through graphs showing how the development process has been since 1999 to date. President Hichilema is also an ardent user of graphs to illustrate the different processes of development which is also used by other global leaders. President Hichilema expressed profound inspiration and commitment to implementing similar initiatives in Zambia. All our citizens, all of them, are equal. 
it does not matter their backgrounds, it does not matter who their mother, who their father is, it does not matter what language they speak, as long as they're citizens. As you've seen here, this group was defined as a minority group, a small group living on the boards. But good leadership, loving leadership, understood the importance of uplifting these people to a better life. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two, that we can do anything we want, anything we believe in, but we have to work for it. We have to work hard. But it's all anchored on love for the people, loving for all our people, as President Xi Jinping did very early on in his leadership when he was in charge of this area and then in charge of this Fujian province. And now he's president of the whole of China. Charit begins at home. He started doing things in different places, including here. And then most of us in the world now, we say, oh, President Xi Jinping, big president, big president of China, the second largest economy. We don't understand why he's president, where he's coming from, his interests in the people, his love for the people. This is it. That's why back home, from different places, thousands of kilometers different, we also have a vision for our people, all of the people's army. And that's why when we took office, we took a decision, dramatic decision, to take money away from the center in Lusaka mm -hmm. and take it to the local areas. There are areas like this. As I was listening to the story, my mind, my brain was running quickly and said, that area is like this, that area is like mm -hmm. this, that district is like that. And I think the concept of redistributing resources, resources are never enough. <laughs> never are resources enough. They are always scarce. The key is how we utilize them. To decide on how we utilize them is anchored on equitous treatment of the people and also to understand that those that have a little bit more need to shed it off, some of it, for people like this. No different. Hence, the enhanced CDF back home from 1.6 million kwacha per constituents per year to 28.3 million kwacha per constituents per year. It's meant to address situations like this. And I can tell you that we will increase it next year in this coming budget. But what else? Education. You listen. Now you have graduates from this area. What do I say? What do we say about education back home? that is the best investment, best equalizer, best inheritance. Mm. There's a story. Now kids from here are able to be in the digital space, digital world, and they can be anything. It is uh, gratifying to see that um, individuals in their collective um, capacities can get together and transform a whole society. This region, as you have heard, it has uh, been known to be the poorest and also the marginal province where people were backward. And um, the President of the Republic of China now, uh, Xi Jinping, who was governor of this district not more than 25 years ago, embarked on a dream to transform um, the lives of the people here who were known as boat people uh, or river people to move them into habitable shelter, to um, commercial fishing, to get them away from the poverty related activities to the wealth making activities and now from that what one would probably call backward and primitive way of living into the state of the art kind of living that we are experiencing today here in China. And so. 
going by the president's vision, our own president, under the expanded constituent development fund, which has been expanded by size and by extent, we are hopeful that despite having running a very small economy, we can make giant steps to transform the rural areas. And that's the reason why, in his wisdom, President Agaide Hichimu decided that he was going to reprofile the ministry that I'm privileged to run from simply Ministry of Local Government and Housing to the Ministry of uh, Local Government and Rural Development, which encompasses the development agenda for both the rural and the urban, but paying more focus, more attention on the rural areas. We have seen here what wonders can be done from wind energy, from solar energy, uh, something that we, we have uh, insisted that we must replicate under the Constitutional Development Fund. As you know, the President has made a decree or an order, an executive order, that he does not want to see by the end of next year um, any social growth point, meaning where people live around the school, around the court, around the clinic, with uh, pit latrines. He, he has insisted that he would like to make sure that um, our people live in sanitary conditions, uh, having running water propelled by boho, a pump that is run by solar uh, energy, and reticulated all the way into the homestead of our people. We have also learned here how uh, the board people transformed to living in flats, high-rise flats. Uh, it is a, a trajectory of the president that by a certain year we should try and move away as much as possible from brass to actual hab habitation that is uh, roofed. The Zambian delegation was deeply moved by the deliberate policies and relentless efforts employed by President Xi Jinping to elevate Shashi village from its impoverished state. The president later visited a prominent Chinese company specializing in the development and manufacturing of lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles, EVs, and energy storage systems headquartered in Nigde, Fujian province. CATL is the world's largest battery manufacturers for EVs. President Hakainde Hichilema, during his visit to CATL, extended an invitation to company founder and chairman Robin Zeng to consider partnering with Zambia in the electronic vehicle battery value chain. The head of state informed Mr. Zeng that Zambia, being centrally located in the region, could be used as a hub for battery distribution to the outside world. So where do you get your raw materials for plants? Currently the raw material getting from Africa, from uh, Australia, or this area. And uh, now the nickel cobo, nickel Indonesia, cobo from Congo. And you know that Zambia has copper, yeah. cobalt, nickel, manganese, uh, lithium basically. Lithium? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a I did little bit study. Lithium, lithium? Okay, I didn't hear about this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just recently, just recently, basically, just a CATL is known for producing a wide range of battery products, including battery cells, battery packs, and battery management systems. Their batteries are used by various automakers globally to power electric cars and have played a significant role in the growth of the electric vehicle industry. President Hichilema wound up his visit to Fuju with a tour of the three lanes and seven alleys. Located in the central axis of Fuju city, there stretches the historical and cultural block of San Fang Shang, translated in English, three lanes and seven alleys which represents the best of Fuju culture. With its unique layout, exquisite architectural details, profound historical accumulation and close ties with Taiwan, the block is known as a living fossil of the neighborhood system. The block of three lanes and seven alleys has been shortlisted as one of China's candidate sites to be inscribed on the world's cultural heritage list. 
This marked the end of President Hitchlemer's visit to Fuzhou as he later headed to Beijing for official talks with President Xi Jinping, furnished with vast experience and knowledge to share and implement back home.